Hey everyone, this is John Stearns from the Zoom Rooms team, and this is an updated uh, demonstration of the Zoom Workspace Reservation Solution. Now, we launched this earlier this year. I've recorded demo videos of the user experience in the past. Uh, there's been so much added over the last couple quarters that I figured it was time to record a new video showing some of the new capabilities. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll show the user experience, talk about the different ways that uh, your employees or users can identify and reserve places to get their work done, whether it's a shared conference room, individual hot desk, et cetera. Then I'll give a little bit of a glimpse into the admin side, just to show how easy it is to go ahead and set this up and deploy it in your organization. So let's go ahead and start with the user experience. I'm going to just showcase the, um, the Zoom web portal here. So as a user, once this is enabled on the organization, I'll go down to workspace reservation, right? And so what we're gonna do is kind of walk through how a user would interact with this experience. So the first thing, obviously we would be searching for a date. You know, I'm planning to go into the office tomorrow or next week or need something in real time. I can plug in whatever I'm looking for there and I can go ahead and plug in specific uh, times on that day as well. I might need an, uh, a room for an hour. I may, might need a desk for the entire day. So uh, very easy to go ahead and customize what, what I'm looking for there. Now, I can also go ahead and search across uh, multiple uh, floors, buildings, cities. So if you're a global organization and uh, you plan to visit a different location, you can go ahead and search across the organization. This is just a sandbox that I maintain personally. So we don't see many options here. Uh, we'll show you recently selected, um, or you could just jump down to whatever floor you're looking for. So I'm just choosing the Stearns Flex Work Floor. Um, and then what I can also do is if I wanted to leverage Zoom's uh, smart suggestions, which leverages AI to have Zoom you know, recommend a space uh, for me to, to reserve, um, I can go ahead and uh, incorporate people that are my starred contacts. So people that I've flagged as, as uh, you know, close contacts of mine in Zoom chat, or I can go ahead and add in uh, people that are frequent collaborators of mine. So teammates, people that I work with frequently. Um, this is the type of information that helps to influence those smart suggestions. So when I go and I hit you know, Zoom recommend me a desk, it will say, here's a desk that you've booked in the past. Here that's by some of your teammates that have uh, reserved spaces for the day, that type of thing. Over time, that AI will get more and more sophisticated to proactively recommend things like days to go into the office or recommend a very specific room based on who's on my meeting invite and how many of them are in the building that day, that type of thing. You can also go over and filter. So if I was looking for uh, just a desk, I would select that. If I was looking for a room, I could select that as well as a specific capacity that I needed for a room. Um, then I go down there and uh, you can create as many custom assets um, that would be associated with desks and rooms as you want. So that would allow users to go ahead and search for specific equipment that might be in the room or you know, attributes at the desk. I want a window seat. I want something with a dual monitor. I want a height adjustable desk, stuff like that. Um, so that would allow people to go ahead and filter and, and find uh, the most appropriate space they're looking for. I can search for specific users. So if I wanted to go in and find where my um, friend or colleague or boss was sitting for the day, I could search for them as well. So a lot of different ways to, to go ahead and identify. Uh, if I go down to this little robot button here on the left, um, that's where I could go ahead and leverage smart suggestions. So suggest me uh, dates to go in the office, suggest a desk for me. I'll go ahead and su uh, suggest the desk and it will just go ahead and um, recommend this desk over here. It's something that I've used in the past. I've booked it and it's, uh, you know, is uh, in line with what my uh, personal, you know, um, preferences are for reservation spaces. So once we want to go actually look at a space, I can go ahead and click on a specific room because uh, now what we're looking at is a live interactive map based on all the criteria I was searching for. I can see green for availability for conference rooms. I can see, in this case, none of the rooms are booked, so I don't see any red. Um, and I can actually see desks here as well. And I see green availability for desks. If desks are booked, you can decide whether to show the Zoom profile picture of that user who booked the desk or just show a red circle, you know, if, if you, if you want to keep that um, uh, anonymous in terms of who booked what desk. So I can go ahead and I'll click on a desk, or a room here first. Let's go find a room that we want to take a look at. 
I'll go ahead and check out this D10 Zoom room and I can find some additional information. I see a, a, a picture that you can upload of the physical conference room. I can see the location, the capacity, some of the assets that are in the room. And I could go ahead and book that if I wanted to. In this case, I'm gonna book a desk. So I'll go ahead and book that desk. This is a Zoom hot desk. Looks, looks like it's got a D10 uh, device there. And again, I can see some assets of that, of that room. This one's a private office, which I'm looking for. It's got a desk, a D10 me um, personal Zoom room system. So I'm gonna reserve that. That looks like what I'm looking for. Um, the way I've set up uh, surveys and questionnaires is uh, these, are, these are ways they're completely customizable that you can set up um, certain information that you wanna gather at the point of reserving, as well as if you want at the point of checking into a reservation. So at Zoom, we use this for headcount for catering for the day, for example. So are you gonna be here for catered lunch? Yes, I will I'll take you up on that free lunch. And uh, you know, are you experiencing any COVID symptoms? That's another very common use case of questionnaires and surveys. Go ahead and say no. So now I see I've made that reservation, right? So I could, I could check that reservation. Once I've made it, I can go ahead and very easily see all my reservations on the right. I've only made one today, uh, but I could go ahead and edit that reservation. If I need to change anything, I can delete it. I can go ahead and change the uh, results that I put in that questionnaire or survey depending on what may have changed. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this uh, just because I'm gonna show you some other ways to, to book um, a desk or a room across a variety of experiences. So let me go ahead and stop sharing here for a second. So that was the experience of a user in the Zoom web portal. Now, what we also did was we took that identical experience, everything that you see is exactly the same. We built it into a desktop app that can be uh, navigated directly from the Zoom desktop client. So your users wouldn't even have to leave the Zoom application on their laptop to go ahead and search and make reservations. So that's available now as well. We've also baked it into the native mobile client on iOS as well as uh, Android. So users can have all those same capabilities on their mobile devices. So if they're commuting on the train and they forgot to reserve a desk, they can go ahead and do that on the fly. Uh, will show how the mobile experience interacting with uh, devices and rooms and desks is, is uh, intuitive as well. All those same capabilities uh, accessible uh, right on my mobile device. Now there's some other ways inside of the physical office for users to identify and reserve spaces to get their work done as well. So the first one I'm gonna showcase here is a virtual kiosk. Now, I've got a separate video that really dives into what you can do with the Zoom virtual kiosk. I'll link that in the, uh, in the notes on this, this video. But in this case, um, I've set up both virtual reception as well as workspace uh, reservation. This is gonna show that same consistent interactive floor map that we've seen across all the different ways you can make reservations. And this is now on a touch screen that would sit in that office. So I could see the rooms that are available. I can tap on those for more information, just like I showed in the web portal or I could go ahead and book a individual desk. I'll book that same desk that I had reserved earlier um, just to show the experience on the kiosk itself. Shows information, I'm gonna go ahead and reserve it. And what's cool about this is now, since I'm booking this from a public space in the office, it's gonna ask me to authenticate myself so I can personalize that reservation to my Zoom profile. And the best way to do that is with a quick scan of a QR code. Scan it, would you like to reserve this desk? I would, and now what you'll see is the desk I reserved is actually right here. So this could be on the other side of the building. Uh, in this case, we've got a very similar device, the same device that is running the virtual kiosk set up at the desk itself. We've seen, you see a nice uh, big red reserve uh, indicator saying this room is booked. Um, we can see I've made the reservation and for what time. Users can still walk up and view availability if they wanted to see if this um, you know, desk was available maybe in the afternoon. Uh, in this case, it is. So I could book, I could walk up and reserve right from the hot desk here as well. In this case, since I did reserve it in advance, I'm gonna go ahead and take out my uh, QR code scanner again, scan it at the desk. Would you like to check into your hot desk? And I've done that, I've authenticated myself. It asks me, it's a little whitewashed uh, from the view here, so you can't see it, but uh, would I like to set up a pin? I'll set that up later in case I need to go out to lunch or something like that. 
Um, and now this device is my personal Zoom experience. If I'm working here for an hour or the full day, all of my Zoom experiences are available directly on this device. My meetings show up, my contacts, my Zoom phone line, my whiteboards, anything else that I've kind of created is associated with my Zoom profile is, uh, is available on this device. We can run the same thing on a Zoom phone appliance. Um, so you could very easily go ahead and check in. You don't have to put a device on the desk itself. You can also put things like a printed QR code so people can still reserve it from the web portal, the desktop app, the mobile client. Um, they can reserve it from a kiosk, but there wouldn't be a, a full device to check into. So they'd scan a simple QR code so you can track people that are booking just desk reservations in a, in a bring your own device style setup. We also have the ability to do is place Zoom room schedulers outside of uh, physical conference rooms. These could have Zoom rooms on the inside of those rooms. They could have legacy conference room technology. They could have no technology. So we place these outside of what we call wellness rooms at the Zoom headquarters um, that, that have no tech in there. It's a place for people to go in. It's quiet. They can you know, take some time out and stuff like that. So I can actually walk up to a scheduling display and hit reserve and I can either reserve the room it's associated with, so this could be mounted outside of a conference room, or I could go ahead in the top right and reserve another room. The reason I show this is because it is now gonna bring up the same exact interactive floor map that we've seen consistently across all the experiences. And I could book a totally separate room from this scheduling display. I could book a hot desk from here. So this is yet another way that users can very easily identify and reserve places to get their work done. So right at the desk, from a kiosk, from a scheduling display, and from all the different um, Zoom clients, including the web portal, right? Now I'm gonna jump back into the, um, the admin portal here for a moment. Uh, this, we showed the user experience. A couple quick things I wanna show as it relates to the admin experience with Workspace Reservation. So I'm gonna to go to the new um, uh, Workspace Management section in the admin portfolio or platform, I'm gonna go ahead and select workspaces. And now I can go ahead and look at account settings as a whole. Um, and that's where I could go ahead and allow uh, people to reserve through their Zoom account. Um, so you might not wanna turn that on until you've set everything up. Um, but that's what un un unlocks that ability for users to start using the service. Um, you can choose whether or not to display the profile picture on desk reservations, or if you just want it to show a red circle, you can uncheck that as well. Um, and there's some, some additional information that's available, um, you know, on floor maps. You can enable smart suggestions if you want to use those. I demoed it earlier. If I wanted to designate specific groups that could only book desks on certain floors. So if I had an executive floor and I only wanted to make that available to a certain group of people, this is where I can really start to um, develop that granularity of who can and cannot access specific spaces, floors, buildings, et cetera, right? So you can set up neighborhoods and zones and stuff like that by, by these capabilities. Uh, if I wanna use the uh, custom questionnaires and surveys, that's how I enable those here. Um, I, and you can also require a pre-check-in questionnaire. So I book a reservation for next week. I fill out all my info. When I arrive that day, you can also require a check-in reservation. That's where I can capture you know, more recent uh, info on COVID symptoms or any type of information I want to gather as people are checking in, right? Got some additional capabilities for customizing the experience there. Uh, if I want to um, allow people to reserve a workspace in advance, uh, the default on the calendaring app side is usually six months. So that's why you see it default to 181 days. If I wanted to cut that down to only allowing people to book two weeks in advance or a month in advance, that type of thing, you can customize that as well. And you can allow people to reserve multiple spaces uh, in case you might have uh, a team manager that might book desks on behalf of their team or an admin that might book desks or you may have different types of spaces. You may use workspace reservation to book rooms, desks, parking spaces, et cetera. So you can really customize that. You can require people to check in and check out. If I turn that on, um, that will allow me to then uh, get granular in terms of how uh, soon before a reservation I want to allow people to go ahead and check in. And if there's a no-show, if someone makes a reservation and they don't show up at that room or that desk, 
how soon do I want to release that space so someone else can use it? So there's a lot of automation built into the experience as well. And I could set up a workspace admins and whatnot. I'm going to go back here and jump down to a specific floor. And this is where, you know, I look at floor settings. This is where I can go ahead and upload a new floor map. In this case, obviously, we see the floor map that I had already updated there. And it's as simple as uh, you see all your spaces on the left. If they've not been uh, dragged over and placed on that floor map, it's very easy to go ahead and, and place those. So I see I made a test kiosk earlier. If I wanted to go ahead and, and plop that down somewhere in this uh, building, I'll go ahead and set it up outside this private office. Um, go ahead, now that kiosk is placed there. If I went and uh, let's see, I'll remove a room here for a second. Just uh, it's no longer on that floor map. I just want to show you on the left hand side that neat bar zoom room. I see it. I drag it over. I can place it directly on that floor map. And um, now I can go ahead and that's that's there. And I can even resize it if I wanted to. And there's different shapes depending on uh, you know what your floor map uh, offices and rooms look like. You can make custom shapes, etc. So it's just super simple to go ahead and set up the um, the actual floor map, you drag your desks and rooms over and you, and you just upload an image for each floor. And then I've got a lot of different uh, settings that would be only for that specific floor. Uh, a lot of them were available at the account level, but if I wanted to get a little bit more granular down to the floor level, I can do that as well here. A couple of things I also wanted to show real quick. I'm gonna jump over to a virtual kiosk just to show how we enable the workspace reservation. So I'm in a virtual kiosk and jump over to the kiosk tab. And if I want that kiosk to show the workspace reservation capabilities, like I like I showed demoed earlier, I just simply check that workspace reservation box. And that's what adds this uh, this workspace uh, button right on the kiosk. That's what unlocks all those capabilities for that touch kiosk. And last thing I want to show here is uh, digital signage. So I'm going to jump into digital signage here. Um, I can do this at the device level, at a floor, building, any layer of the hierarchy. I could do it across the entire organization. Jump over to that digital signage um, uh, tab there. And then I see the ability to go ahead and um, add different uh, content to that, that playlist on that signage. And what you'll see here is on the left, there's just a workspace reservation tab. And I go ahead and I just literally just select that. And that's going to pull that floor's um, real-time visibility of room and desks into my digital signage playlist. And anywhere on that floor, we will incorporate that into our playlist. So uh, your employees can very easily um, you know, look up and see uh, real-time visibility for their whole workspace and they can easily see if there's a room or desk available that they want to go up and book. And I can show exactly where I want that to, to be displayed in the, uh, um, in the playlist. I can add additional digital signage playlist content. I'll do a whole separate video on digital signage, but I just wanted to show how easy it is to, to bring into the loop um, in the uh, workspace reservation solution. Last thing I'll show, um, I know I said uh, signage was last, this is the last, is you know how do I set up a new hot desk? So I'm gonna go to add a new Zoom room system under room type, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call it a Zoom room because this is gonna go into a shared space that multiple people will be able to reserve. I'm gonna go ahead and call that hot desk test. I can go ahead and associate uh, a calendar service to this right now, or I could do it at a later date. I'll do it uh, a little bit later. I'll go ahead and finish that here. And now what I've done is let me go down to my hot desk test that I created. We see that 16 digit activation code that I can punch into the device. And now I can go in and edit the specific um, information I want available. The key here is right in the rooms profile tab is I want to enable this for hot desking. And so that will go ahead and it will um, allow me to set that up. It's going to prompt me to place that desk on a floor map. And that will be another asset that's reservable in that, in that space. So super simple to set all of this up on the admin side, um, set up specific devices, kiosks, set those account level settings, upload my floor maps. And again, going back to the user experience, 
very simple, very consistent across any way that I choose to make a reservation on the Zoom platform. Zoom web portal, desktop app, mobile app, virtual kiosk, scheduling display, at the desk itself, visible on digital signage, really ties the whole Zoom Spaces portfolio together. Um, workspace reservation is available today. If you have Zoom rooms already, you can go ahead and add those to floor maps and start using workspace reservation immediately. You don't have to buy any additional licensing for those rooms. If you wanted to extend this to hot desks, um, you could take a look at uh, the, the new workspace reservation licensing, uh, which is licensed by space. And you can talk to your account manager about the, the various capabilities. We've also bundled all of these capabilities into a variety of our offers uh, in the Zoom One um, product portfolio. So that's another way that you could consume um, additional licensing. So hopefully this uh, video was helpful. I know it was a deep dive on both the Zoom user and admin side. Lots more to come here. So I'll probably record more videos in the coming quarter or two because we're adding more functionality to workspace reservation every single release. So hopefully this was helpful. Thank you very much. Subscribe, comment, reach out at any time if you have any questions. And I hope you have a great day.